Rob, you've been following this all morning. Yeah, we talked about it yesterday, but honestly, this was much worse than we anticipated. Uh, last night, uh, yesterday evening, around 4, 430 is when the first tornado touched down in southwest Iowa and moved across much of the state. Another one touching down just south of Des Moines. But look at all these uh, storm reports across much of the, uh, the Midwest. But in Iowa itself, those two tornadoes traveling for nearly a four hour period proved to be terrifying and deadly. Overnight, rescue workers combing through debris, searching for survivors. Oh my God. After a massive tornado with at least EF3 strength tore through Winterset, Iowa, just southwest of Des Moines. At this time, we can confirm that we have six fatalities, including four adults and two children under the age of five. There are also four adults injured, three that are in serious condition, and one that was transferred to Des Moines Hospital with life-threatening injuries. Drone footage capturing the magnitude of the damage. Roofs ripped right off. Over 25 homes completely destroyed. Nothing but debris left where homes once stood. This is, I think, the worst that anyone has seen in uh, quite a long time. Another fatality confirmed in Lucas County. As the storm moved in, hail pummeling the area. Windshields cracking. It is practically a whiteout here. And in South Dakota, whiteout conditions. Some vehicles struggling to stay on the road, others spinning out. This man struggling to keep his footing in the whipping winds. And those winds are going to expand today across parts of the Great Lakes and into the northeast as the low makes its way northeast. It is becoming more of a warm sector uh, deal here, so mostly rain here and uh, temperatures out ahead of it will be pretty, pretty good to uh, above average, especially south of Washington, D.C. is really significant. We're about three miles south of Winterset, and this is the former site of what used to be a home. All that's left is, and nothing above ground is left. This tree came from about 20 yards to the west of here, just ripped off the top and tossed. We've seen a lot more action over the last couple of, uh, last hour or so as the sun comes up and people start to get out and look at the damage. Take a look at this. This is a massive branch that, that was just completely snapped off most of the tree. I have no idea how tall this tree used to be at one point, but, but it is laying down straight to the north. Most of this damage is to the north. All, all the winds seem to have pushed it to the north, northeast. And then look at the debris field. That home we showed you around the corner, that's what's left of it. Walls, chimneys, we even saw an air conditioner back in there thrown at least 50 or 100 feet from where the house used to stand on this hill. This was a grove of trees, and then down the road, you can see more of the emergency response from folks down the road. This is the area where so much damage happened last night between 4.30 and 5. It is going to take a massive amount of time to clean all this up because so many folks are dealing with so much rubble.
Margaret. I've seen that face before. Another story about to hit the internet. What do you regret doing this time? No, it's not. Not that. For what? What is it? They're calling it an extinction level event. We have a day, maybe two. Before what? They don't know. We need to get back to Washington. Mr. President, Carson, I have members of the cabinet ready to reconvene, sir. Good. I just told Margaret we need to get back. The Secret Service thinks it's unsafe for you to fly, sir. The FAA has suspended all travel until further notice. Until we know what's happening. Set it up here, in the hotel. Keep the Vice President in D.C. Yes, sir. My God. What are we going to do? Leo might not have missed you, but Terry sure did. You still getting letters from Houston? He emails them every day. I think that's kind of cute. Yeah. Until the feds send the SWAT team to the house to bust up your stalking. Mm. We need global coordination. Look, I want briefings every 10 minutes. They say we only have a few hours of satellite telecommunications. All right, then fire up the old Cold War infrastructure. We're not going to be able to do this alone, Nancy. Mobilize the National Guard. We need to maintain law and order when the news of this breaks. I want every governor in every state kept in the loop for as long as we can. Folks, there is no handbook or plan for any of this. We all need to act from our gut and just hope and pray that we made the right decision. We just have an idea of what's to come. It may help you get back. Go ahead. The anomaly is a gravitational vacuum. A black hole? No. A black hole is omnidirectional. This has a focal point. It is directional. Think of a flashlight. Instead of emitting light, it, it sucks everything in. You do mean everything? Everything. Matter. Matter. Antimatter. Antimatter. Light. Gravity. Time. So, yes, this time is a quantifiable object like space. Matter. Gra gravity. It's moving on a path. But put it in a place to directly impact Earth in 86 hours. <laughs> and that's it. When when it hits us, it's it's zero time. We're we're gone. We are out of it. We're 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 going down this punchy town. We're gonna be done before that for humanity anyway. In 10 to 12 hours, it's going to exert a slight gravitational pull on the moon and the planet. Weather patterns and the tide is going to rise, and the water cycle is going to be accelerated. And there is a high possibility that a, a vapor canopy will be created, <clears throat> thick atmosphere keeping moisture closer to the surface of the planet. Thankfully, we've depleted the ozone enough that. But first, tonight, crews in the Panhandle are battling a huge wildfire. It is growing. Thousands of people forced from their homes, and some of those homes lost as the flames continue to spread. And now we're learning crews from right here in Central Florida are heading that way to help right now. 
Good evening to you. I'm Eric Von Anken. Glad you're joining us on this Saturday evening. The fire ballooned in size over the past 24 hours to nearly 1,400 acres. The Sixers Troy Campbell is live now with the latest on local efforts to help out up there. Troy. Orange County Fire Rescue posting this video on Twitter Saturday evening, showing strike teams from Orange, Seminole, and Osceola counties, along with the cities of St. Cloud and Cape Canaveral, heading to help combat the Atkins Avenue fire. Hundreds of people have been evacuated as homes continue to be destroyed. Just Ron DeSantis declared a state of emergency on Friday, helping provide resources and funding for crews battling the fire. I mean, this is a, this is a really significant, fast-moving fire and it obviously has done some damage. With about 1,500 acres burned, the governor says damage left behind from Hurricane Michael in 2018 has helped the fire quickly spread. I'll tell you, um, I, I thought that given where it was, that you would have way more homes uh, that would have been destroyed by now. And I think it's a testament to what they did uh, to be able to protect this community. In world news, Russia is now upping the ante in its attacks against Ukraine. According to Ukrainian officials, Russian troops have taken over a nuclear power plant after overnight shelling. A senior defense official says the U.S. is deeply concerned about Russia's intentions. Isabel Rosales reports on Washington's response and the outrage from NATO accusing Russia of using banned artillery. Worldwide alarm as Russian forces attacked Europe's largest nuclear plant on Thursday. According to Ukrainian fire at a nearby building has been extinguished. And there doesn't appear to be any radioactive leakage. The facility remains under Russian control, with plant managers working at gunpoint. The Kremlin should immediately cease all attacks around Ukrainian nuclear facilities and allow civilian personnel to do their work to ensure the facility's safety. This new video shows the aftermath of a Russian strike to an apartment building north of the capital city of Kyiv. To the southeast in Mariupol, no water, no power after Russian attacks. Ukrainians in Odessa form a human chain, filling up sandbags to protect their city. Meanwhile, the head of NATO accusing Russia of using widely banned cluster bombs. What we see is, is heinous, it's, it's, it's a brutality, it's, it's, it's killing of civilians we haven't seen uh, since the Second World War in, uh, in Europe. At home, the Biden administration is disputing criticism from lawmakers that it's not sharing battlefield intelligence fast enough. U.S. officials insist they are sharing intelligence with Ukraine at a frenetic pace. We have been providing a historic amount of security assistance. In Washington, Isabel Rosales. Fox 13 News will continue to cover the very latest developments in Ukraine. We'll share updates on air and online at fox13now.com.